Hello, this is a basic video on sedimentary rocks. Uh, today we're going to discuss how sedimentary rocks form. This is the process of uh, weathering and erosion, then sedimentation, deposition, uh, and burial, compaction, cementation. Why do sedimentary rocks matter? They cover a good chunk of the planet's surface, and about 5% of our upper crust by volume is sedimentary rocks. My favorite part about sedimentary rocks, though, is that they tell the story of the past environments where they were deposited, also known as the environment of deposition, uh, abbreviated by EOD. They are also an important economic resource. So how do we make sedimentary rock? Well, we start by weathering and erosion. There's actually a lecture on this series devoted to weathering and erosion if you want to learn more about it. But essentially, it's breaking down and dissolving existing rock to make sediment pieces of existing rock. And then that sediment is carried or moved sometimes by wind, water, ice, or gravity. Those uh, eroding agents deposit that sediment uh, via the process of deposition, and it comes to rest in its new home, its environment of deposition, the environment where it was deposited. Deposited means laid down, set down, right? Next, uh, the sediment is buried over time. You could have a basin that is slowly filling with sediment. You have sediment covered by other sediment, and you have this process of burial. Then, uh, because of all of the sediment overlying the other sediment, it starts to squeeze it, compact sediment. It undergoes some basic chemical changes from uh, low-level amounts of heat and pressure, not enough to metamorphose that sediment, but definitely enough to change it chemically. And finally, it, it's, it can be glued together through this process of cementation. And all of these steps encompass what's known as lithification or turning to stone. So to be more specific, diagenesis includes uh, increased temperatures and pressure. And it can include the deposition, the uh, precipitation of new minerals and the d dissolution of existing minerals. And this usually happens in the upper crust. Lithification, meaning turning to stone, adduced here as an example, is taking unconsolidated sediments and creating sedimentary rocks from them. And this involves compacting them, squeezing them, the weight of overlying deposit sediments helping in that process, and water, groundwater, moving through that material crystallizing new minerals, precipitating new minerals between those grains to hold them together. Really common cementing agents are quartz and calcite. Geologists like to classify rocks based on the story that the rocks have to tell. The whole reason we're looking at these rocks is to try to decipher some useful information. A lot of times that is what happened to create those rocks. So we break sedimentary rocks into two major groups, detrital, also known as plastic, and uh, chemical slash organic. Sometimes uh, people break these out into a third group known as biochemical or organic. But uh, for the sake of this lecture, I'm grouping them together. Detrital rocks contain a clastic texture. Clastic meaning pieces. A detrital sedimentary rock contains pre-existing pieces of other rocks that have been re-glued together. Chemical uh, Sedimentary rocks are different because uh, the chemicals were dissolved completely by water or uh, some other solvent, usually always water, and then redeposited. Uh, they recrystallize out of solution. So you have a lot of chemical slash organic rocks that form that way. We organize clastic, aka detrital rocks, by size. From uh, biggest to smallest, the size of the clast, the size of the pre existing pieces that they're made of. The biggest size class is a gravel size larger than two millimeters. We call these conglomerate if the, the class are rounded, and brescia if the class are angular. We'll talk about those in more detail, but it all has to do with the environment deposition. If the size is sand size, we creatively name that sandstone. It's uh, smaller than you can see with your eye, but still gritty between the teeth, that's silt size. We creatively name that siltstone. And finally, if it has a smooth texture when gritted, 
we call that mudstone. Uh, and if it has fine, thin layers known as lamini, uh, we'll call it a shale instead of a mudstone. It's a little bit more specific. And all of the size is differentiated by the amount of energy in that environment where the rock was deposited, the environment of deposition. So let's look at the largest size and work our way down. Conglomerates and brushes. Here's a picture of a beautiful conglomerate. Uh, and it has rounded grains that are glued together with some cement, the matrix, right? So some possible environments of deposition is a river with high energy and, oh, this is a misprint, large amounts of travel. Uh, breshes are angular with uh, gravel sized sediments and those can be uh, an example of an environment of deposition for that is a landslide where there's a lot of energy but not very much travel. Think of a rock tumbler, the more the rock gets tumbled, the rounder and smoother it becomes. So that's all about the amount of travel both types of rocks are generally poorly sorted, but there are exceptions. Next size down, sandstone with sand sized particles. Possible environments of deposition include beaches, rivers, dunes, anywhere that you see sand in the modern world accumulating naturally, that is a likely environment of deposition of sandstone. Quartz is the most abundant mineral within sandstone. Here's a close up microscopic picture of a quartz aronite sandstone with these beautiful polished quartz grains glued together. If it contains arcos uh, or, uh, or if it contains feldspar you have an arcos and a uh, gray wacky contains rock fragments. Next size down is shale, mudstone, siltstone. All of these are your smaller particles. Low energy environments of deposition like lakes and semi-deep ocean gradual settling, not a lot of energy to move things around. It allows those really fine particles to fall out of the water and accumulate into these rocks. <clears throat> and, and when these things weather, they generally form uh, gentle slopes and it looks like a huge pile of material like this. If you have shale, you get these nice thistle layers where it breaks apart into these nice layers. And that is it for uh, detrital sedimentary rocks. And we'll get more into rocks, uh, <clears throat> chemical sedimentary rocks in the next lecture.